prayer we should do for the nation for, for prosperity is Surat Al-Fatiha. Specifically, Surat Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is the beginning and the end of every good thing. Nigerians reminded of the need to be truthful in serving the nation as President Buhari joins other Muslims to pray for progress of the country. That this is the only us we have and this us is not only for ourselves today, it is also for the future generation. Don't abuse the environment. Experts advise the people on the occasion of World Environment Day. And Inspector General of Police assures Nigerians of effort to overcome the security challenge posed by Boko Haram insurgents. Thanks for joining us on the network news tonight. I am Ronke Kolawoli. Today's Friday Jumat is the second to be attended by President Muhammadu Buhari after his inauguration with the theme features of a good leader and the lessons of the holy month of Ramadan. Correspondent Ismail Musa reports that the prayers was led by the deputy chief imam of the Abuja National Mosque, Ustaz Ahmad Onilewura. His report. The Imam has joined a leader to be responsible by having the interests of the government at heart at all times. While calling on the congregation to respect their leaders and constituted authorities, he stressed the need for the Muslim Ummah to pray for prosperity and socioeconomic development of the nation. The prayer we should do for the nation for, for prosperity is Surat al Fatiha. Specifically, Surat Al-Fatiha. Al-Fatiha is the beginning and the end of every good thing. And if you can, every one of us recite Al-Fatiha 99 times every day of Ramadan for peace and harmony in this country and for the success, success of the administration, I believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant our prayers. With less than a month to Ramadan, the Imam called on the Muslim faithful to see the period as a time for sober reflection. And we must engage during this Ramadan in spiritual healing of our life. We must recite Al Quran plenty. We must do more forgiveness. We must do more sadaqa. The sermon also featured prayers for peaceful coexistence of the nation. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. Just days after his inauguration, President Buhari has been traveling to neighboring countries to garner support and strategies on how to end the Boko Haram insurgency and bring peace to the battered northeastern part of the country. But why this urgent diplomatic shuttle by the president? To give perspective to the issue, correspondent Ibrahim Ismail Ahmed had a chat with a former UN undersecretary, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, who also served as Nigeria's external affairs minister between 1984 and 1985. Although the new administration is yet to fully unveil its foreign policy objectives, the last time Muhammadu Buhari was in power, the concept of Africa as centerpiece of Nigeria's foreign policy was redefined to principally serve Nigeria's interests and that of her citizens. A policy of concentric circles of interest and activities uh, was then designed where Nigeria will be at the epicenter, the core is the defense of Nigerian security, Nigeria's prosperity and welfare of its citizens. Uh, in, in that respect, we signed a quadripartite agreement with our Western neighbors in December 1984, that is Benin, Togo and Ghana. And in those, uh, those the challenges of security were not were different from what they are now. But imagine if we had continued that kind of close collaboration. There was also a realization that notwithstanding its size and wealth, the country cannot be an island unto itself. We will be strongest when our neighbors are strong and, and, uh, and peaceful and stable, when West Africa is strong and stable, when Africa is strong and stable. With issues of insurgency personified by the Boko Haram and other transborder crimes at an all-time high, the new Nigerian government made securing the territorial integrity of the country a top priority. Muhammad Buhari campaigned on a promise to secure a nation and to govern the country very well. Now, to secure the nation means to pay immediate attention you know, to the security challenges that the country faces. 
this country, these challenges, whether they be in form of insurgency, the terrorism that we have in the Northeast, you know, or pipeline vandalization and the crude oil theft, kidnapping, armed robbery, all of these things present a challenge that require an immediate action. Even before taking over power, President Muhammadu Buhari amassed miles in the diplomatic circle with his famed trip to number 10 Downing Street, London. Ibrahim Ismail Ahmed, NT News. In another news, President Muhammadu Buhari has condoled with the government and people of Ghana over the dual tragedy of flooding and fire outbreak which claimed lives in that country. The president, in a statement signed by the Senate Special Assistant Media and Publicity to the president, Malam Garba Shehu, said Nigeria stands by Ghana in its moment of grief and loss. The president noted that the twin tragedies of flooding and fire outbreak reminds leaders and government in the West African sub-region of their responsibilities to the problem of global warming. He prayed that the soul of the deceased rest in external bliss and give the families the fortitude to bear the irreparable loss. Meanwhile, Ghanaian government is to release $14 million to help flood victims after a fire outbreak which killed about 200 people at a petrol station on Wednesday. Correspondent Chim Dima Hundubisi reports. <laughs> Ghana has declared three days of mourning for victims of the fire and flood incident, which resulted in the death of more than 150 people, once an official death toll is known. Togo's president touched down Ghana's airport and joined his counterpart, John Mahama, to visit victims of the incident at the hospital. Rescue workers are cleaning up roads and digging up for more victims, while power supply has been restored in some areas. Emergency services, including the military, the police, the fire service, they managed to rescue quite a large number of people, but unfortunately, a large number of people lost their lives. Meanwhile, officials are investigating the cause of the fire, which has been reportedly linked to flood waters from a storage tank flowing towards a nearby fire and causing the outbreak. Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. Away from Ghana now, Chairman, the Afghan Chairman, Senate Committee on Rules and Business of the Seventh Assembly, Senator Ita Enang, says no fundamental error has been committed in the record passage of 46 bills in one day. Senator Enang stated this while briefing newsmen on the status of bills, motions, and sundry legislative measures of the Afghan Senate. National Assembly correspondent Adam Sambo reports. During the life of the 7th Senate, which lasted between June 2011 to June 2015, a total of 585 bills were introduced, out of which 128 have been passed and orders at various stages of legislative process. Among the 128 bills, 46 were passed in approximately 10 minutes on the last but one legislative day of the 7th Assembly. Many described the unprecedented action of the lawmakers as curious. Senator Ita Enang, however, insists that the Senate has not done anything wrong as far as legislative practice and procedure is concerned. We were right to have done what we did. No injury has been caused to any of the laws. No injury has been caused to the public. I don't know how you will feel if most of these bills were left unattended. It is you that will judge the legislature in the negative. The 7th Senate, he also said, passed 111 resolutions, which put to a very reasonable extent a check on the executive. Similarly, 84 important executive nominations, ranging from ministers of government and confirmed, while 81 petitions from aggrieved Nigerians were entertained in the last four years. In Abuja, Adam Musambu, NTA News. Observers of the nation's economy are hoping that President Muhammadu Buhari's administration will serve the people of Nigeria better by improving the economy, given his determination to serve the country selflessly 
and the eagerness of the members of the Eighth Assembly to bring about change in the life of the nation. Senator Ita Enang, former chairman, business and rules in the Seventh Assembly, and Senator Kariat Abdurazak Wadabe, former chairman, Senator Forum, in the last retreat for Eighth Assembly, stated this on NTA's current affairs program, Moment for Thought. Nigeria is not going to have the excess crude that it used to have. Yes. And so we're not going to have toxic funds that, that uh, collapses the real funds. The new crop of legislators, majority of them flew in on the wings of change. Mm. And they have come with a renewed determination to do something different. Moment for third comes up tonight at 11 p.m. on the network service of the NTA. And now the Afghan leader of the House of Representatives, Molikat Akondi Adeola, has called on the incoming PDP members not to note that being an opposition does not necessarily mean that they must oppose everything brought to the floor by the House to the House by the ruling party. She made a call at an interactive dinner for the incoming and outgoing PDP members, as reported by Aishatu Zango Abdullahi. While appreciating her colleagues for their support and indulgence throughout the last four years as she discharged her duties as leader of the House, Representative Mulikat Akande Adeola called on them to focus on her best to bring back the PDP on track again. For those of my colleagues that are not returning, I urge us not to be discouraged but to pick the bits and pieces of what came out of the recent election and re-strategize for the future. Some of her colleagues applauded the House leader for her contribution to the success of the seventh House of Representatives. I want to congratulate her for her wisdom, thank her for the opportunity of the leadership quality that she has demonstrated. You said you stepped aside temporarily. I do not doubt that it is temporary because your exemplary qualities are qualities that cannot stay below the radar for a very long time. The interactive dinner was put together by the House leader with the aim of welcoming incoming members and to say thank you to her colleagues. In Abuja, Aisha Tu, Zangwa Abdullahi, NTA News. The need for all Nigerians to join hands in bringing about sustainable democracy and fostering unity among different political parties in the country was the crux of discourse on NTA's Good Morning Nigeria. Discussions stress the importance of political opposition to good governance. Abdul Malik Adil monitored the program and our reports. Opposition today has its roots in the 17th and 18th century political development in Europe and America. The emergence of democratically elected government that evolved from the development necessarily made it imperative for the opposition to emerge. The first thing that creates a sustainable opposition is free fair elections. If elections are not free and fair, if elections are a weaker group, then of course at the end of the day nobody will win the opposition party. Opposition politics develops the qualities and brings out those strengths that these countries manifest in a rather subsumed manner. It must also be understood that in the practice of politics and democracy, we must go back to the through which Aristotle stated that the best is, lies in the mean. And the mean is in the social contract. The guest noted that in a properly functioning constitutional democratic system, there be a constant reminder to the populace, constant reminder to the populace that there is a viable alternative to the ruling group that can do better if given the opportunity. Now, when you have a, demo a democracy, it's not in what happens to those who are in the majority party. The true strength of a democracy is in what happens to those who are in opposition. We must understand that the more this country develops this deliberate of agreeing and the, uh, disagreeing, principle of dialectics. If these things don't manifest, we are still missing it. The discussion will emphasize that the essence of government is the provision of social amenities, added structural development, amongst others. In Abuja, Abdul Malik, NTA News.
We now go to Ikita State, where elected members of the 5th legislature have been inaugurated with a challenge to demonstrate high level of patriotism to justify the mandate of the people. The assembly was proclaimed by Governor Ayodele Fayoshi. Ayodele Yogushake has the report. From Buhari administration. Much has been spoken of the expectation of the Muhammadu Buhari-led administration. Although these expectations are in line with the inspiring promises of the APC during the electioneering campaigns, Nigerians indeed have a part to play. We call on all Niger Deltans, in particular, and Nigerians, to exercise patience with Mr. President and give him time to settle down so as to enable him to actualize his campaign promises. It should be tough. It should be purposeful, they should be corrupt free, they should have a sense of positive idea generating set because it is ideas that rule the world today. We will do our best and support the government and go with them because they are young people so we have to just respect them. No political strategies can make the magic of development without having the support of the masses. We should not give bribe and we should not take bribe. On the whole, Nigerians are expected to be the change they want to see just as the government is to show direction. In Abuja, Joseph Orok, NTN. That report came from Joseph Orok. Nigerians reminded of the need to be involved in tree planting. Details when we return. All the senators elect and members elect at the House of Representatives to the inauguration of the 8th National Assembly, scheduled as follows. Date, 9th June 2015. Venue, Senate and House of Representatives Chambers. Time, 10 a.m. Documentation will commence from Sunday, 7th to Monday, 8th June 2015, at the National Assembly Complex. For senators elect, Senate to hearing room 1, while that of members elect will be in the House hearing rooms 1, 2, 3, and committee rooms 5, 7, and 8. White House, House of Representatives. Representatives wing. Senators elect and members elect at the House of Representatives are expected to present their rate of returns from INEC, Code of Conduct Bureau Acknowledgement Slate, Declaration Certificate, Original Credentials and Photocopies, Birth Certificate or Declaration of Age, and Six Passport Photographs. Senators elect and members elect will be conveyed from their hotels to the National Assembly by official buses only on the inauguration day. Salisu Abubakar Mikasua Clark to the National Assembly announcer. At 10, Fumi wanted to be a chemist. At 15, an engineer. At 17, she was accepted into a prestigious university, followed by tragedy. Her father died. Yet, at 21, she still graduated top of her class. Choose life. Book a plan for the ones you love and keep the music playing long after you're gone. Mansard Insurance, for life and living. Want your bathroom to dazzle? Give your toilet the hypo treatment to brighten and also kill germs so your bathroom stays disinfected and squeaky clean. Hypo, hypo. finish my MBA, I will have my promotion and my own office. When I move into my new flat, you know, say, left don't change. Uh, it's time I started planning on building my own house. In my time, university was not so expensive. But what choice do I have? Once we can finish our new office building, the sky will be the limit. Everyone is waiting for their opportunity. At FCMB, we help you step forward and take it. FCMB, my bank and I. All over Nigeria, Ariel claims to give us the best stain removal in one walk. So we'll collect tough stains, red sand, fruit juice. To see which gives the best stain removal in one walk. We'll wash one half with Ariel and the other with the other peanut detergent. With the other peanut detergent, we'll be 
said, Ariel, Ariel, best hair removal in Nigeria in one walk. There is a reason Africa is called the new frontier. What was once potential is now an opportunity ready to be seized. Once revered for our resources, today's wealth lies in our people. People who build the cities that shape the future. People who know an idea in one place means business in another. A generation for whom technology means there are no borders, no boundaries. We are the new lions in a brave new world. Kings of the urban jungle. And there's a bank that puts the world in our pocket and the future in our hands. UBA, Africa's global bank. The executive governor of Benue State, Chief Dr. Samuel Otten, congratulates the good people of Benue State, South Senatorial District, for honoring their illustrious son, Senate President David Mack, with a Thanksgiving service on Sunday, 7th June 2015. May God continue to direct his part. You know that you are exposed to up to 100 illness-causing germs every day. I encourage my kids to learn new things, and if they get hurt, I rely on my Dettol to fight germs. It's like my own first aid kit. My family needs protection from germs. My Dettol disinfects surfaces and coats, keeping them clean and safe from germs. This is to inform ministries, departments, agencies of the federal government, state and local governments, corporate bodies, private organizations, embassies, diplomatic missions and individuals interested in the official portraits of the President Muhammadu Buhari and Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo to apply to the Federal Ministry of Information for soft copies of the portraits at no cost. Applications should be sent to the Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information, Radio House, Abat Makoliwe, Garki Abuja, or Veronica Adeyemo at fedcs.gov.ng, or Marcos Amulume at fedcs.gov.ng. For further contact Mr. Peter Dama, Director, Protocol and Public Relations, or call 080-3318-4875 or 080-5967-3861. Announcer, Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information. A hectic lifestyle or overeating can cause a burning pain in your chest. That's harmful. Take Gaviscon. One dose relieves in three minutes to soothe the pain of heartburn. It goes straight to the source to work for hours, providing long-lasting relief. That's why I recommend Gaviscon. I recommend Gaviscon. Gaviscon, fast relief you can actually feel. If symptoms persist after three days, consult your doctor. Been there. We now take you back to Ikite State, where elected members of the 5th Legislature have been inaugurated with a challenge to demonstrate high level of patriotism to justify the mandate of the people. The assembly was proclaimed by Governor Ayo Fayoshi. Ayo Deju Mushaki now brings us to report. That was the proclamation by the state governor, Mr. Ayodili Faoshi, to signal the official commencement of the Fifth Assembly. Mr. Kola Oluawali, representing Momba Constancy 1, was nominated as the speaker, and Shegun Adewumi from Ekiti West Constancy 1 was nominated as deputy, which was unanimously approved by other members. The speaker later performed oath of office on the new members. In a speech, the state governor, Mr. Fayoshi, congratulated the new members, urging them to see their mandates as called to service. The speaker, Mr. Kola Olua Wale, promised an all-inclusive legislation that will have positive impact on the state. 
The fifth assembly performed its first legislative assignment by approving the request of the governor for a constitution of chairman and members of transition committee for the 16 local government councils in the state. Meanwhile, the house has adjourned sitting till next week Monday. The governor, Mr. Ayodele Faoshi, and his supporters had earlier in the day taken a walk from Ijibo to the house of assembly complex. In Adekiti, Ayode Jogishaki, NT News. And now to security matter. The Nigerian troops Thursday repelled terrorist attack on Shetimari in Borono State, during which two suicide bombers and a score of terrorists died. Defense Information Major General Chris Olukolade indicates that over 12 rifles and one machine gun were recovered from the terrorist group. Also recovered were rocket-propelled grenades and some bombs. Troops conducting mop-up operation are still combing the area, while others are in pursuit of those who are on the run. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police, Suleiman Arase, has assured Nigerians of the government's readiness to end insurgency in the country. The IGP was speaking at the government house, Jola, where he called the Governor Mohamed Omar Jibrila to commiserate with him and the people of Adamawa State over the bomb blast which claimed many lives on Thursday. Correspondent Mohamed Seidu reports. Uh, whose first part of call was uh, the scene of the incident was accompanied by the Director General National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, Mohammed Sani Sidi. The delegation was briefed on the ugly situation by the State Commissioner of Police and other security stakeholders. The team later called on the Governor, Mohammed Umaru Jibrila, where the IG commiserated with him and assured that security agents are on top of the situation. Also, in his remarks, the DG Nema Mohammed Sani Sidi announced the donation of some drugs to health institutions threatening victims of the bomb blast. Responding, Governor Mohammed Umaru Jibrila thanked the delegation and called for partnership with security agencies in fighting insurgency in the state. I'm sure we will be able to assist the victims. And uh, we also pray and hope this thing will not happen again. The delegation, including former Vice President Atiku Abubakar, was at the Federal Medical Center Yola to commiserate with the victims. The DG Nema later presented some of the two hospitals. In Yola, Mohammed Saidu, NTN News. In the meantime, the Inspector General of Police, IGP Solomon Arase, has charged the newly appointed aides the camp, ADCs, and chief security officers, CSOs, attached to state governors to be professional in their duties and also maintain dignity of the force. The IGP made this call while declaring open a two-day induction course for the newly appointed ADCs and CSOs in Abuja. The IGP also warned their officers not to engage in any domestic duty or uh, conduct that might demean their offices. And now to the judiciary, where Justice Salis Garuba of the FCT High Court, Abuja, has directed parties involved in a housing scheme dispute to seek alternative process to the dispute to fast track the resolution of the case. Correspondent Abdullahi Suleiman Jaji has details. Subscribers of the NLC Christine Lally Affordable Housing Scheme deposited 10% part payment to transfer the money to another bank in the name of the chief registrar of the court, amounting to over 2.6 billion naira. Counsel to both parties also agreed to the advice of the judge to seek alternative means to settlement other than litigation. The essence of the ADR in this matter is to fast track what the subscribers have come to court to seek. Is to fast track the uh, the re recovery of their fund. What it means, we have to go there and settle ourselves amicably. If we agreed with settlement, whatever terms we reach there, we come back to the court and inform the court about that. The court has granted my prayers, and that is what I told the judge that I am ready to ensure that subscribers get their money in the event the project is not going on. And I'm sure that and hopeful that from that meeting we're going to reach a consensus. The case was adjourned to the 19th of June 2015 for further hearing in Abuja, Abdullahi Suleiman Iaji, NTA News.
the Supreme Court has set aside the judgments of the High Court, which ordered Al Haji Ado Ibrahim to vacate the stool of Oinoi of Ibrahim land. This judgment therefore means that Al Haji Ado Ibrahim holds on to the office of the paramount ruler of Ibrahim land. The report. Two lower courts had previously dethroned Al Haji Ado Ibrahim. The Kogi State High Court on the 3rd of April 2006 and the Court of Appeal, which was then presided over by Justice Dahir Mustafa on the 2nd of January 2009. They all had based their judgment on the process of his appointment on the 2nd of January 1997, which the court said violated the regulations and processes of appointing the Ohinui. But at the final leg of appeal by Ado Ibrahim, the Supreme Court said the lower court lacked the jurisdiction to even look into the merit of the case. Since at the time the case was instituted, the case was already statute barred. The position of the Supreme Court is that the law provides for such cases to be instituted latest three months after the act. In this case, the plaintiffs challenged Ado Ibrahim's appointment nine months after, making it to be caught up by the limitation law. The court therefore set aside the order of dethronement of the lower courts. One of the uh, grants upon which the judgment is based is that grant that the case was not commenced within three months as provided for by the Public Protection Act. The facts supporting the argument on statute bar were already in the pleadings from the trial court, even though it was not specifically made out as a, as a case before the trial court and the Court of Appeal. But when we came into this matter, we felt it was an issue we should raise before their lordships, and their lordships agreed with us. So now, after 17 years in court, Al Haji Ado Ibrahim can now comfortably continue as the Ohinoi of the land by virtue of the ruling of the land's apex court. From the Supreme Court, Femi or NTA News. Following the passage of the bill on the establishment of the Diaspora Commission by the Senate, members of the All Progressive Congress in the Diaspora have honored the outgoing Chairman House Committee on Diaspora, Abike Dabi Erewa, with an award of excellence in tackling issues affecting Nigerians in the Diaspora. Gabriel Odu has that report. The All Progressive Congress Diaspora members who came for the presidential inauguration are optimistic that the needed change is here to stay, hence the need for Nigerians to embrace it. On why they decided to honor Abike Dabri Erewa, APC Chairman, United States, Tony Esama, has this to say. Uh, she's gone to visit Nigerians that are serving in prisons. Uh, she's also visited uh, people that have been that some measures when our brother got ill in this government of change. We believe we have the talents, we have the expertise in the critical areas that Nigeria needs in its development. On the passage of the bill on the establishment of the Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabri said it is a welcome development. Be that one-stop agency to deal with diaspora matters. And then look at the enormous talents that we have all over the world. It's amazing what Nigerians are doing all over the world. We shouldn't waste you know, those talents and those enormous human resources. In Abuja, Gabriel Odu, NTN News. Thank you, Gabriel. And now to Energy Matter. Another attempt at resolving the lingering fuel crisis in the country was made today as the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Petroleum Resources, Taye Haruna, and other officials of the ministry met with petroleum marketers in Abuja. Correspondent Isaac Nkuma reports that resolutions reached at the meeting is targeted at eliminating the long queues at petrol stations across the country. For about two months now, the queues have persisted, despite perceived resolution reached between the National Assembly and petroleum marketers on the 25th of May 2015. The stakeholders' meeting, tagged Queues Must Go, is seeking another approach to addressing the situation and averting a reoccurrence. Our mission today is for Queues Must Go. PBMC, in conjunction with marketers, to increase the level of supply of PMS to all retail outlets nationwide with immediate effect. We have resolved that 
we are going to move product to clear the queues. Issues of product lifting, delivery and pricing were also discussed with solutions proffered on how best to monitor the supply chain and avoid product diversion. The DPR, they need to intensify or to improve in the area of monitoring so that uh, these things will get to us, to our, our marketers, at the regulated price. At the pump stations, once this uh, action kicks in, and products are moved into the feeding stations like we have been promised. We'll make sure that anybody that sells above the mark price at that point definitely will be penalized. With the adoption of the resolutions, hopes are high once again for a lasting solution to the current fuel situation. Isaac Unkuma, NTA News. Vera has our next story in Lagos Network Center. Hello, Vera. for joining us in Lagos. The well-being of humanity, environment, and the functioning of the economy ultimately depends on responsible management of the planet's natural resources. This was emphasized by speakers at an event organized by the Nigerian Environmental Society, Lagos Island chapter, to mark World Environment Day. Joy Ken Ababwaya has details. Research, according to environmental experts, have shown that people are consuming far more natural resources than the planet can sustainably provide. This and the high population growth, as well as economic development, they say, have resulted in a depletion of the Earth's ecosystem. There's the impression we have that, oh, the Earth cleanses itself, the Earth renews itself, so whatever damage you cause, it will be rectified. But there's a tipping point in nature beyond which you cannot go back to the green state. This event is therefore to raise awareness on the need to live within planetary boundaries and strive to protect the Earth to ensure a healthy future. Government must ensure that we do good environmental practices. Ecosystem services are important for Nigerians, for humans in general. And the tree planting, I mean, other than the beautification of the fact that it actually beautifies uh, the environment, it also aids in oxygen. Elsewhere, experts called for recycling of waste to reduce carbon emission, thereby preserving the environment. When you change the oil from your generator, don't throw in the public drains. Creating a space for environment in a structure like this is akin to creating a space for environment in your life. Imagine what the world will look like if every one of the 7 billion people on Earth worked towards preserving the planet. In Lagos, Joy Ken Abakuya, NTN News. Substandard diapers with a street value of more than 200 million naira have been impounded by the Standards Organization of Nigeria in Lagos. Three Chinese nationals were also arrested in connection with the seizure. Amici Piles has details. The visit by officials of the Standards Organization of Nigeria to the shops where the Chinese businessmen conduct their illegal activities followed series of surveillance by the SON. The foreigners specialize in importing diapers suspected to be substandard and repackage the products with wrappers of popular brands and sell to the unsuspecting consumer. And you can see very unhygienic condition. And when you use it, it can um, have a lot of reactions on the bodies of the children. And we begin to say what is the cause without knowing that these are purely, properly, pure, some substandard products that were imported by these Chinese agents here, using this place as a hideout. According to the agency's head of inspectorate and compliance, B. Dubai, the imported diaper is not registered with the SON or any other regulatory agency in the country. Our zero tolerance to substandard products is in place and we continue to pursue it. Anywhere, whether here in Lagos, Portacot or Medugli, anywhere we see any of these substandard products, we are going to seize them. The substandard diapers have since been evacuated while the culprits have been arrested and handed over to the police for further investigation. In Lagos, I'm Echipayos, NTA News. Moving on now to business news. Economic experts decry pressure on the Naira as a result of excessive local transactions with the dollar. Ablai Mohammed has details on our business news segment. 
Good evening, this is Business News and thanks for joining us. The demand for payment of goods and services in foreign currencies by some local service providers, economic analysts say, is on the rise. These transactions have continued to mount pressure on the local currency, which has shared a huge percentage of its value against the dollar since the third quarter of last year. In this special report, Business News analyzed the situation and implications. The Central Bank of Nigeria has issued several warnings against pricing and payment of local goods and services in foreign currencies, especially the dollar. Consequently, the Apex Bank has also publicized the stipulations of the Local Tender Act, emphasizing the consequences of contravening the act. Our legal tender in this country is not dollar. It is Naira. And the governor of Central Bank came up categorically that we should not be making payment in dollars. However, some observers say the trend of transacting businesses in the country with foreign currencies is still very much in vogue, with politicians, hotels, schools and multinational contractors being the major offenders. For instance, letting or renting a place in Nigeria for a property that is domiciled here. Some of the multinationals they are guilty of this because most of them, they do some of their businesses in dollars, even locally. The pressure experienced by the Naira as a result of the demand for the dollar locally is enormous. That has made it even much more uh, a pressure on people to ask for a more stable currency in their hands. To discourage the trend, analysts say offenders have to be sanctioned to set an example. You're already having the law. The law is not inhibiting you in operating it. I think what I want to do, what we need to do, is to make some scapegoats of people that will violate it. The Naira began a drastic plunge against the dollar as a result of the downturn in the price of crude oil at the international market last year. Since then, its recovery has been very slow. That's business news tonight. Thanks for being part of it. The news continues shortly. Let's welcome Ms. Harrison. She's a Colgate expert. It looks like her friend is in pain. Uh, Tom has a toothache. It's because he has a hole in his tooth. Dentists call it a cavity. That's why I recommend brushing twice a day with new Colgate Maximum Cavity Protection plus sugar acid neutralizer. Imagine this is your tooth and these are sugar acids that cause cavities. Colgate's unique formula helps eliminate sugar acids, protecting you from holes. So how can we help prevent some cavities? With Colgate! Colgate with sugar acid neutralizer to fight the number one cause of cavities. Brush with Colgate twice a day, every day. The Jumia Mobile Week Megathon. The biggest mobile sale ever. Get the phone you've always wanted. Hurry, download the app and get great deals now with the Jumia Mobile Week Megathon. Go to jumia.com.ng to buy now. Causes the body to sweat, which attracts germs that are easily passed from one person to another. What keeps you so cool, man? Dettol Cool combines Dettol's protection with added menthol to protect from germs. Cool gives you maximum protection against germs every day from head to toes and an invincible icy feel for super cool confidence. Dettol Cool, maximum protection against germs every day. Insurance. Ensuring happiness since 1970. You're welcome back. As Nigeria joins the rest of the world to mark the 2015 Environment Day, there has been a renewed call to preserve, protect, and effectively manage the abundant resources of the planet, starting from the immediate environment for sustainability. Joy Uzo was at a symposium organized by the Federal Ministry of Environment to commemorate the day in our reports. 
The theme for this year is Seven Billion Dreams, One Planet Consumed with Care. The general consensus of experts who converged on this symposium to commemorate the day in Nigeria is that the topic is apt and gives room for everyone to reflect on how they live and the impact it has on the planet. If I have to drink, drink from either sachet or pet bottles, let me dispose it properly. And if I have to eat, not because I can afford to eat anything, let me eat the bit I can. And the World Environment Day is an opportunity for us to stop and think ourselves that this is the only earth we have and this earth is not only for ourselves today, it is also for the future generations. Why experts emphasized living well within planetary boundaries as a most promising strategy for ensuring a healthy future. The peculiar challenges Nigeria is battling with were brought to the fore with suggestions on management procedures. Some of the challenges include oil pollution, desertification, erosion, illegal mining activities, among others, in affected geographical regions. It is a responsibility for each and every one of us. We must take care of our environment. I always say this, that when we treat malaria, and we spend so much money buying drugs for, to treat malaria, we usually forget the environmental component of, mal of the cause of malaria, stagnant waters. In Abuja, Joy Uzo, NTA News. Following the directive by Governor Yeson Wiki of River State to the sole administrator of the Waste Management Agency to clear port Harcourt rules of refuse within 72 hours, the head of the agency has met with the refuse contractors to beat the governor's deadline. The directive is to restore Port Harcourt to its Garden City status to mark 2015 World Environment Day. Sony Uber reports. Administrator Felix Obwa told waste evacuators that it is embarrassing to find heaps of waste littered on the streets and major road medians. He subsequently issued a 48-hour ultimatum to evacuators to rid Portaco City of waste or lose their job. We know the streets of Portaco, what we will see is unimaginable. And the government will not accept that. Part of this government program is to return back to that to each lost glory. And how can we do that without you? We are not come here to look at party faces. We are here to PDP, we are here to APC. We are here as river state uh, people. The sole administrator said Governor Nyes Onwike is determined to restore the Garden City status of Port Harcourt and to achieve that, all hands must be on deck and promised to offset their unpaid bills soon. In Port Harcourt, Sonny Obo, NT News. We now join Bala in a Sokoto Network Center for news from the seat of Caliphate. Thank you, Ronki, and welcome to Sokoto. President General, Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs in Nigeria, Sultan Muhammad Saad Abubakar III, has challenged the Nigerian Bar Association to devise ways of ensuring quick dispensation of justice in the Nigerian courts. The Sultan gave the challenge while receiving the President and executive members of the NBA on a courtesy visit at his palace. Jabi Ibrahim Dabori has more. The Sultan said he was not particularly happy when he saw many awaiting trial inmates during his visit at the Sokoto Central Prison. He noted that unless quick dispensation of justice is guaranteed, no plan to decongest the nation's prison can succeed, adding that even the management of the prisons would continue to be a Herculean task, while saying that his council will continue to educate people on their need to be law-abiding citizens, the Sultan acknowledged the role played by the members of the NBA during the 2015 polls, which according to him helped in bringing peace and unity among Nigerians. When we are in the court, don't look at who is here, don't look at his color, don't look at his background, who is he? They are bound to defend him. I know one of your roles, of course, when something is black, we try to convince or confuse the other person is white.
The Bar Association Barrister Augustine Alege said they were at the Sultan Palace to pay traditional homage as a mark of respect. In Sakwato, Jabele Ladaburi, NTA News. And that is it, Prince Sakwato. Back to Ronke in Abuja. Thank you, Bala. Implementation of the Millennium Development Goals MDGs will be winding up in July, while a new order, Sustainable Development Goals SDGs, is to be launched in September in New York, United States. This is why the Learn Share Network, a civil society organization, is raising awareness about the post-2015 development agenda and pulling ideas together to enrich the policy content and framework of the SDGs. Dima Udubisi has that report. With just a month to end the implementation of the Millennium Development Goals, MDGs, adopted by world leaders in the year 2000 to, among other things, eradicate poverty, improve health, education, and sustain the environment, Nigeria and some other developing countries have been rated to have implemented up to 80% of the MDGs. On the other hand, developed countries have fully reached the MDGs, giving rise to the need for a switch to the Sustainable Development Goals. Not long from now, the United Nations system and member states will negotiate and adopt a universal set of 17 proposed Sustainable Development Goals um, with 169 associated targets. What we're doing is to help through this kind of platform to bring those who understand who have the policy to come and break it down at the end of each forum we have a summary with clear action plans pure bullet points and these are taken to legislators sustainable development goals which contain integrated approach to economic social and environmental issues also incorporate the private sector as a central partner in achieving the goals Hence, the call for corporate businesses to form policies that have global sustainability responsibilities with the full participation of the government, media and civil society organizations. In Abuja, Chimdema Ndubisi, NTA News. You're still watching the network news. We're now going on commercial break and when we come back, we shall give you a bit of sports and other stories. Please stay with us. happening here? Mama, mosquitoes. I sprayed, but the mosquitoes aren't dying. <laughs> no longer, because I've bought Multane Power Guard, which kills 100% mosquitoes. Multane Power Guard kills 100% mosquitoes. It is one year now after the death of Alaja Abulganiu Akambibello, former chairman Chris Cross Limited and Gab Hotels who was murdered on the 5th of June 2014. Be remembered for her immense contributions forever. May the Almighty Allah grant him alternative for those. Announcer, family. The Great Adams family of Oruso in Ikorekpene local government area of Akwaibom State regrets to announce the sad and untimely death of their son, Prince Kenneth Andrian James Etem, which sad events took place on Monday the 4th of May 2015. Until his death, he was a husband, father, brother, uncle, politician and businessman. Funeral service, Saturday the 6th of June 2015, to be conducted by the African Church, Our Saviour's Cathedral, Oruso in Ikorekpene local government area of Waibom State. Venue, St. Saviour Primary School School ground, Uruguay, Oldie to Road, Ikonekpane, Akwaibom State. Time, 
10 a.m. internment follows at his country home at number 76 Old Itu Road in Ikorekwene, Akwaibom State. Thanksgiving service Sunday the 7th of June 2015. Venue, Our Saviors African Church, Cathedral, Oroso, Ikorekwene Local Government Area, Akwaibom State. Time, 10 a.m. Signed, Honorable Don Etten. For the family. Glad to know you're still watching the network news. And talking sports now, Nigeria Super Falcons in high spirit ahead of the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup in Canada as Barcelona and Juventus get set for the UEFA Champions League final in Berlin on Saturday. This and more with Ayodhya Jimakindi on Sports Update. African champions, the Super Falcons have stepped up preparation in Winnipeg ahead of the 2015 FIFA Women's World Cup, which kickstarts on Saturday in Canada. The players arrived to... And now time for a quick check on where the prospects across the country.